Mei. Happy New Month to everyone in this service today. May the month of March be a month of marching forward. Everything about you, everything about your family, everything about your business, your career, your spiritual life, you are marching forward this month. You are marching out of every dungeon of the wicked this month. You are marching out of every trace of generational cross this month. You are marching into victory this month. You are marching into realms of unlimited breakthrough this month. Lift up your two hands and thank God for the new month. Thank God for bringing you and I to this new month. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him for keeping you since the year began. Now you have stepped to the third month. On the third day, we'll raise us up. You are among the rising army this month. Now ask him to speak to you today. Jesus, I want to hear from you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, thank you for another month. Thank you for the special manner of fruit you have prepared for us this month. Thank you for wonder proofs that were packaged for us this month. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your word break forth today. Let it open new chapters to everyone's life. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. I'm pleased you may be comfortably seated. Would you help me greet your neighbor, congratulate him, happy new month. Do that with a smile, a broad smile. Amen. Again, our prophetic focus for the month of March is fight the good fight of faith. For what reason? So you can lay hold on what belongs to you in eternal life. For that is God's program of events. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. We are unto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You have told people what Christ died for a seven-fold package at redemption. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. You have told everybody. Now they are waiting to see this is manifest in your life. So fight the good fight of faith so as to realize your eternal life package with Christ. Why? From the days of John the Baptist, 
the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and only the foul violent can realize their portion by the force of faith. By the force of faith, a man can receive nothing except be given from above. And let not that man think he shall receive anything from God if he's not demanding for it by faith. So you put James chapter 1 and then um, uh, you put John chapter 3 verse 27. It's very clear that your package with Christ more often than not will require the violence of faith for delivery because there is a contention against your possession. There is a deadly contention from hell against your possession. So you must get ready to engage the violence of faith to take delivery of what belongs to you. Fight the good fight of faith. That is your calling. You want to manifest your package of eternal life? Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. So you can lay hold on eternal life. We are on to here also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Everybody has heard you say it, but they want to see it. So fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And we need to train up because faith is a profession. I once taught you that. Faith is a, is a Hold them fast the profession of your faith without wavering. It's a profession you have to develop, you have to grow in it. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for his faithful that promise. So it's a profession we have to grow in it, we have to develop in it. We have to develop capacity. Praise God. And that does not jump on people. It's something you subscribe to consciously. You subscribe to it consciously. You subscribe to it consciously. You train up. You learn more. You train better. And then, I mean, for instance, we talk about Bible school. What it does is to accelerate your spiritual growth. Accelerate your spiritual skill. People don't know that these things require skill. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13. He that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for it's a babe. So you need to develop skill. Amen. It's not only in technology you develop skill or science. You develop skill in spiritual things. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The things that obey me will obey you when we operate on the same frequency. Yes, sir. When we're operating from the same depth. When we are operating from the same depth, what obeys one will obey another. Praise God. Now we have chartered accountants, we have chartered engineers. Chartered, you know, you chart your way up to be chartered. <laughs> you chart your way up to be chartered. That's the only way to do it. What makes you tremble makes others smile. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> It's gone about that. Not by God's own decision, but by your own commitment to spiritual skill development. What do I call it? Spiritual skill development. <laughs> I once mentioned to you, I've been building my own spiritual library since I was 20. Consciously buy books. Build them myself. Just like David behind the wilderness with the sheep. Built himself to a point that he could confront a lion and say, No! A child should run away when you find a find lion, but not David. No. So we can't sit down there wishing 
that someday my muscles will develop. There is no such day. You consciously build your muscles. You don't wait for it to happen or you waste an entire life. You consciously build it. He said, faith comes or faith develops by hearing and understanding the word of God. The word comes, it, it grows. Faith grows. Faith develops by hearing and understanding the word of God. Faith doesn't come by hearing the word. Faith comes by understanding. You move from the realm of hearing to understanding. Understand that thou what thou readest, or what thou heareth. He said, how can I? Except someone should help me. And someone came on board and helped him. Do you believe? Oh, yes, I believe. Spiritual understanding makes faith become automatic. The depth of our understanding is what defines how faith works and to what level faith works in our lives. Can I hear your amen? amen. That to are quoting scripture does not mean you understand it. He said, when you have found it, then there shall be a reward and thy expectation shall not be cut off. So you have to get to the point where you are not just reading it, you have found it. When you have found it, the proofs will be there to show. When you have found it, the proofs will be there to show. Well, this month, somebody's faith will be on fire. Amen. Somebody will gain practical command over life situations this month. If you are that one, let me hear your loudest amen. So our teaching series for this month is, for Sunday services, engaging violent faith for supernatural breakthrough. Engaging violent faith for supernatural breakthroughs. Scripturally, all children of God belong to the tribe of Judah. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And it's not ashamed to call us brethren. So we belong to the same tribe. We belong to the same family. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 11. It's not ashamed to call us brethren. So every child of God belongs to the tribe of Judah. And we saw a picture of this winning, ever winning tribe. This ever-winning tribe. We saw the picture of it in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8 to 12. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. He said, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the pre, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he coached as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall arouse him? Stay clear, oh, stay clear, oh, stay clear. Oh. <laughs> the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the Lord give her from between his feet, until she look home, and unto him shall the garden of the people be. Now, Biden is full unto the vine, and his ass is caught unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. His eyes shall be red with wine. This ever Conquering tribe is likened to a lion's web, a lion's colony, 
a lion's pride. You don't joke with them. And that's the tribe you belong to. So it's not the kind of you that some witches will be chasing about in your sleep. No. 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 By assessing the wine of the world. Wine. Amen. From Isaiah 55 and verse 1 to 3. Oh, every man that thirsted, come ye to the waters. Ye that have no money, you don't need money for it. Come ye buy it. Come buy wine and make without money and without price. Now he said, but wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, nor your labor for that which satisfy it not? Hearken diligently unto me. Now, what that means is that we have four levels of nutrition in the word of God. If you look at verse 10, so shall my word be. So shall my word be. That is gone forth out of my lips. It shall not return to me void. So the water, oh ye that come ye to the waters, water in the world, milk in the walls, meat in the world, and wine in the world. Amen. Your innocent water put in a bowl is not alcoholic. You can drink forever. Your eyes can be red. Praise God. Your stomach may be heavy, but your eyes can't be red. You guys say, was drunk with water. No. You can't get drunk with water. It refreshes you from thirst. Amen. But if you put that in the same innocent water, you put some grains of millet or guinea corn. Over a period of time, uh, it begins to turn. It begins to turn. And by the time you take it, after one cup, your eye will be turning right now. <laughs> now, it's the same water. But the wine realm has emerged through a process of fermentation. Many believers have never assessed once in their life the wine realm of the world. When once you get that, you are unstoppable. How many know that nobody jokes around with a drunk? Do you? Because he can react at any level and you can't determine his reaction. He say, you stupid man, you look at how drunk you are. He can pluck your eyes out. And then you know that he's drunk. So you get to a point in the school of faith where devils warn themselves against you. They say, don't move near him. Oh. <laughs> he's drunk. His eyes is red with wine. You know, wine level revelation will engender wine level faith. You don't stand their way. They flush you. They crush you. It's in them. So we, we, we need to pray that this year, you know, something must happen about your life that has never been there before. Amen. You must get to a point of being drunk with the wine of the world Amen. and gendering the wine of faith. Amen. That makes you unstoppable. That makes every molester, every mocker, clear the way of you. Amen. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. That's where violent faith comes from. It comes from access to the wine realm of the world. And then your faith catches fire. Your eyes turn red. And every devil that they were saying to Jesus, hey, have you come to the church before the time? Have you come to no, that's faith on fire. That's when faith gets on fire. Let us alone. What have we to do with you? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know who thou art, the Holy One of God. You find devils screaming at your instance. Can I hear your loudness, amen? Yeah. That's where God is taking you to this month. 
you are not taking a no for an answer anymore. Yeah. No devil will dare you and go free. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we have different brands of wine made available to us in the world. And something interesting is this. A well-brewed wine can last for centuries without losing its potency. So you find in some of those European countries, in the US, some wine bottles that were brewed 200 years ago. The effect is still the same. That's why when you catch up with the wine of the world that triggered the wine realm of faith in you, it endures for life. Its effect is as intoxicating as the first time you got it. Amen. What I got in 76 was the wine of Matthew 33. It has never needed a review. Amen. Amen. No. The, so when I saw this 200 year old wine, I said, hey, that's the one I took. That's the one I took that has not needed a review reconsideration or oh, what's happening to me the thing is just turning me and turning me and turning me without end may you hit some treasured wine this month Amen. can any medical verdict ever create a concern for me Never. I left that realm longest time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The doctor may have a problem and his equipment. <laughs> but as for me, I've been baptized into the reality of total health, unquestionable health, stable health. Irresistible hell. And it's not only for one. What he says to one, he says to all. It's just to come into the same realm with it. To come into the same, same realm, realm with it. I believe like I believe in heaven. That a witch dares me, he can't survive. I, I believe that with everything inside me. That people gang up against me and survive is not possible. Because I saw me from scriptures, and that includes you, as a stone after the order of Christ. You don't go squat free. You come against him, you are broken to pieces. That he now realizes that you are against him, you are grinded to powder. Grinded to powder, so there is no escape. And that's for all of us. I said, that's for all of us. Amen. Every child of God is redeemed a lively stone built up into a spiritual house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And Jesus was the stone in Zion. You come against him, you are finished. He comes against you, you disappear into thin air. They won't know you existed. Well, from now, any devil all his agents that gang up against God's glorious agenda for your life will disappear into the thing here. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you have been called to a fight. Now, you may not be interested, that doesn't mean anything. The opposition is ever ready. You have been called to a fight that the death of Christ will only hold value as you engage in the fight. Yes, sir. Otherwise, you have wasted his blood. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. We are unto ye are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is good. He is ever faithful. Is ever present, 
a very present help in time of need. You have made many great professions which are true. But you must engage in the fight to take delivery of those things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What is faith? Faith is not a religious theory, but a mystery of the kingdom. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. What makes the conscience pure in this regard is you are not double-minded. It's either coming from God or I don't need it. God can't do it, I don't need it. God can't give it, I don't want to have it. God can't take me there, I don't want to get there. Now, that's what we call pure conscience, not come to church in the morning, go to native doctor in the evening. That's not it. Praise God. Now come to church in the morning and be going after some godfathers here and there to help you out. You'll be there for life, going in cycles. Faith is a vital mystery that, deserve, that de demands your absolute trust in God. A double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. Anything from God. We also understand that faith is not a gentle stuff. Faith is a violent force. That paralytic man was there on his bed for eight years. He said, I heard Jesus is in town, take me there. <laughs> the God that says, Sir, there is no way in. He said, Is there a roof up? Said, yes, go through the roof. Faith is not a gentle storm. Okay, there is no room today. Is he going today or is he going to be here tomorrow? Let's go home. We come back again tomorrow. If he has gone to another city, you take me there. Eh? You see? Faith is a vow. Today, not today. Whether there is room on the floor or not, there must be room on the roof. I'll be the first one to show them that you can go through the roof to get to anywhere you are going. And Jesus saw their faith. Jesus saw their faith. He saw their violent faith. Son, your sins are forgiven. Go home. <laughs> Amen. And they exclaim, we have never seen it in this fashion. Jesus saw their faith. He needs to see your violent faith to deliver your heritage. He needs to see it. All this gentlemanly faith won't get you anywhere. If it doesn't happen this year, next year is for Ambe. Wait till next year. If it doesn't happen next year, pata pata by 2025. <laughs> and if it doesn't happen by 2025, by the time I'm 80, I know. Amen. Praise God. Faith is not a gentle stuff. Faith is a violent force. Faith is a violent force. Bartimaeus cried. He said, shut up. He said, shut what? Jesus! He said, wait a minute. This boy must not die. He said, help me call that one that's screaming. And he got his side back. Yes. Because he won't let go. We need this level of violence of faith to realize our glorious destiny in Christ. So it's not a belief system, something you organize and arrange and, you know, put together how to behave. This is how you must get it. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. By force. By force. Why violent faith? There are giants in everyone's promised land. 
And it will take violent faith to dispossess them from our possessions. It will take violent faith. They say we cannot take it. No, they are stronger than we. Caleb says, stop that. We are well able to possess the land. We are well able to possess the land and to overcome it. We are well able. Violent faith gave Caleb his place in destiny. Violent faith gave Caleb his place in destiny. It's the only way to secure your place. It's the only way to secure my place in destiny. We need to engage the violence of faith to silence the enemy and provoke divine intervention. He gave them. Two out of twelve said we are well able. Ten said by general consensus we have looked at it. It is impossible. And so they lost out. Not one of them saw the promised land. You won't miss your promised land. He said, but Caleb had another spirit. That's called the spirit of faith. And as Hule followed me, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit in him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where unto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Faith was oozing forth in Caleb. There is nothing in them. I saw them myself. They are empty barriers. If God delights in us, and I know he does, we will flush them out. They cast stones to throw at Joshua and Caleb, but the glory of God covered them. That's the evil of unbelief. It says out cheaply. Now that it's not moving, thank you, Jesus. We try again. Faith says it must move. There is no way out. We are not turning back. We are, there is no retreat. So I hate the word retreat. I hate the word retreat. I hate it. Praise God. I hate the word retreat. I love advance. What, what are you retreating? Where are you retreating to? No. The first will still be there tomorrow. So conquer it today. Amen. What are you doing there? Amen. Conquer it today. Yes. Floor it today. So we don't go on retreat in our system. <laughs> we call it summit. Yes. Mountain top. Yes, yes. We call it advance at the university. Yes. There is no retreat. Retreat to where? <laughs> you say, where do we go from here? Say forward. Oh, Did you say retreat? Oh, the Red Sea is here. The army of Pharaoh is behind. Where do we go from here? Say, tell them to go forward. Yeah. Advance. Go forward. <laughs> advance. Amen. Amen. You have been retreating for too long, so it's time to advance. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You are going nowhere but forward. Yes, sir. From this month of March, your month of marching forward, you are, you are going nowhere from now but forward. Amen. Your spiritual life is going forward. Amen. You are going forward in your business and career. Amen. Your family is going forward. Amen. Your children are going forward. Nothing goes backward in your life anymore. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. That's why we need violent faith. The giants in our promised land say, where are you coming to? We are the giants in the land. Who is that God who can give you this land? You come here, we swallow you up. And they began to exaggerate the capacity of their, of, of their opposition. They said the land eats up the people. So how did you return? Because you said you went to the land and you searched it. And it didn't eat you up. Now, it's after you return, you say the land is eating up people. Okay, we sent 12 of you. The 12 of you came back. So who was eating up? It's exaggeration. Somebody 
has some challenge on his head and he keeps on exaggerating it. I have not slept for the past 21 days. And you are talking. No, it's not true. It's not true. All the parts of my body pain. pain. <laughs> Including your mouth that you are using to talk is painting. The mouth is painting. You so over exaggerate your enemy that your faith just dies. You can never dominate anything you don't despise. You can never. You can never. You can. You know this Boko Haram thing. If you fear that hey, we are Boko Haram. Boko nonsense. <laughs> Boko nonsense. When I cause the calamity is happening, there comes sir. Yes, sir. Yes. The calamity. Mm. You are meteor. Meteor, what? <laughs> you walk on my farm, you are dead. Yes. yes. Don't try it. With meteor, what? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> my father didn't buy land from any full age. Yes. We gave them where to stay in the forest. There was no time full of any man held the land in my place. So how did it become your land? But they are silenced now. They are hiding. <laughs> Their counterpart has risen against them. You know I'm a tech one. <laughs> Amen. They are not born and arrow fighters, they are high tech fighters. Yes, yes. <laughs> as soon as they heard of them, speed. Don't mess up. And then they hear prophets of our order. And you, you mess up, you are finished. It will become history. Yes. The hearts men never cause a rampage in Nigeria. Amen. Amen. I've lived there before, so I know everything about it. There is nothing. Empty noise. Empty noise. The remainder of them, called Boko Haram or Metiala, is gone extinct. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. You know, they hear me all the time I'm speaking. They are hearing what I'm saying now. And they are urinating their trousers already. They are smelling already. This is not Nigeria of 1821. Praise God. <laughs> we have two special brands of wine and scriptures that I'd like to introduce you to before we close in this service. One is the Holy Ghost wine. What do I call that? That was the wine that God Peter intoxicated on the day of Pentecost. That message has an intoxicant root. It was too bold. It was too strong. And yet no man can say what says thou. They stayed clear. His eyes was red with the Holy Ghost word. I pray that each one returns today with the fresh wine of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The fresh wine of the Holy Ghost.
We saw that effect in Acts chapter 2 and verse 14 to 41. Very simple thing to know is that the Holy Ghost is God's wine that secures our place in the race of life. They wanted to stop them. The wine of the Holy Ghost in them said, now you think about it, whether to obey you rather than God. But as for us, we cannot but speak those things that we have heard and said. They were just unstoppable. They were under the influence of the wine of the Holy Ghost. They were just unstoppable. Well, the good news is, you are leaving this service today as an unstoppable entity. <laughs> now, see the effect. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, Acts chapter 4, verse 13, and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took.